everybody AFN's playing. Yeah! Yeah! Joanne Vieira, Marketing Director for the Halekoa, and I'd like to welcome all of you to the Halekoa Hotel. Located on world-famous Waikiki Beach, the Halekoa, which means House of the Warrior in Hawaiian, is your very own hotel. We operate exclusively for you and all members of the armed services, both active duty and retired. Built with non-appropriated funds, raised to the military exchanges and the MWR activities worldwide, the Halekoa opened in October 1975 as an Armed Forces Recreation Center. Although we are not subsidized at all by the government, we are able to offer you rates that are much more economical than neighboring Waikiki Beach hotels without compromising our top-notch services and facilities. Rates are based on your military pay grade, so they're always affordable. Our spacious oceanfront location offers you a wide variety of activities to enjoy. We've got music, entertainment, and excitement in the Halekoa's own lounges, restaurants, and showrooms. We've even got a traditional Hawaiian luau right on the beach at sunset. So come to the Halekoa. You deserve it. Aloha and mahalo. I'm Colonel Brem Morrison, Commander, 89th Military Airlift Wing, here at Andrews Air Force Base, Maryland. The mission of the 89th is to provide safe, reliable, and comfortable worldwide DV airlift for the President, the Vice President, Cabinet members, members of Congress, and other high-ranking dignitaries of the United States and foreign governments. Good morning. Welcome to the crew briefing. Following this briefing, the most important element here at the 89th Military Airlift Wing are the people. We're a selectively manned organization, so we do have an opportunity to handpick the individuals that are assigned here to the unit. They come here very motivated, highly skilled, highly qualified. We'll require a uh, Greek and Israeli dip clearances. Thank you very much, John. Chief Hannigan, would you tell us about the status of the aircraft and any special parts we may need on this trip? Demand processing, Sergeant Walker, may I help you? Have one order ready to copy. Go ahead. All right, this is a generator control panel. All right, that part will issue. Take down today's date, 8009. The part is on its way. Here you go. All right, thanks a lot. Safety is very important to us because of the people that we fly around the world. And to date, we have accumulated over 800,000 hours of accident-free flying. Reliability is important because the people departing out of here at Andrews or anywhere in the world are relying on us to get them to their appointed destination on time. Our foods aren't 
prepared up ahead of time from a, a major corporation or anything like that. Get about eight heads of lettuce for the hex. And we have to real. buy everything in the commissary and prepare it from scratch. The morning of the mission, you're usually in here about two to three hours prior to takeoff. Just not sent out to us on a plate and we just kind of like put it in the oven and heat it or anything like that. And you get all the stuff that you bought and the catering van picks us up and takes us out to the aircraft. We operate a fleet of some six different types of aircraft. Our inventory includes 26 different fixed-wing aircraft and 18 helicopters. helicopter squadron we, we have a lot of pride our mission here at the first helicopter squadron is to fly high-level DOD and government officials in and around the Washington DC area cannot be accomplished without teamwork. And that airplane represents the United States of America no matter where it goes in the world. And we carry the banner, the United States flag, carrying our nation's leaders in their pursuit of peace. It's a very satisfying job. It's a fun job. It's a great job. And we love it. Kaysan, the scene of one of the most bitterly fought and highly publicized battles of the Vietnam War. From late January to early April 1968, a determined group of 6,000 Marines and Allied troops held out against a besieging force of 20,000 North Vietnamese. This is the Kaysan story. support, B-52 bomb runs, and tactical airlift combined to defeat the North Vietnamese. Major McGuire, United States Army. They said it was a victory through air power, but for us crunched on the ground, it was really a victory for the 130 capability to deliver here. 
land up in this area and they take fire from the uh, hill surrounding it coming in, they'd be under fire almost constantly. And then when they landed, the NVA and the hills would start flipping a few in on them. So we got the name of calling them mortar bait all the time. In response to enemy fire, different methods of delivery were used by the Air Force. Container delivery system. Low altitude parachute extraction. Ground proximity extraction. Our requirements for beans and bullets were well over two to three hundred tons a day. We got a hell of a lot of in with choppers, but the heavy tonnage requirement was moved by the old 130s. Been my experience with working with the airlifters during the last stint here, that they supported us in the Delta, back into the Ashaw Valley with the first team in Alui, and they've lost their planes every trip, but I'll say this much for them. You call them, tell them where it has to be, and they'll put it in. In February and March 1968, the siege was on. Five times the fortress was attacked in battalion strength. Five times the North Vietnamese Army was repelled. Record airstrikes and artillery bombardments prevented the enemy from massing for the all-out attack. Air Force, Navy, and Marine pilots flew more than 24,000 sorties and dropped more than 103,000 tons of bombs. The North Vietnamese troops were forced to dig in, keep their heads down, and concentrate on avoiding being scorched by napalm or pulverized by the bombs. In addition, more than 100,000 rounds of artillery and mortar fire were poured on the enemy. The knockout punch came from 2,500 B-52 bomb runs. Coming in at 20,000 feet, they literally destroyed the target area with their 500 and 750 pound bombs. During bad weather and at night, the B-52s used radar and a ground control targeting system called SkySpot to continue the attack. On March 27, 1968, the North Vietnamese Army began to withdraw. A few days later, the Marines moved out, opened Highway 9, and linked up with 30,000 relief troops. On April 7, 1968, the relief troops reached Quezon. President Lyndon Baines Johnson. Some have asked what the gallantry of these Marines and airmen accomplished. Why did we choose to pay the price to defend those dreary hills? The fortress at Quezon straddled critical supply and infiltration routes that the North Vietnamese were using. Route 9, which it commanded, was to be a major avenue for the enemy into populated areas and into the cities of South Vietnam. By pinning down and by decimating two North Vietnamese divisions, the few thousand Marines and their gallant South Vietnamese allies prevented those divisions from entering other major battles such as those for Huey and Quang Tri. Some call Khe Sanh the single most important battle of the Vietnam War. 